some breaking news in the last half hour since the programme started. Police involved in the manhunt for Abdul Azidi say a man's been arrested on suspicion of assisting the suspect after the chemical attack in Clapham last week. They say the 22-year-old man was taken into custody in the early hours of the morning but has since been released on bail. In an update this afternoon, the Metropolitan Police say they're still unsure of the relationship between Azidi and the adult female victim, but the children who were injured were not his. The woman remains in hospital and could lose sight in her right eye. Joining us now is retired Met Police Superintendent Leroy Logan. Leroy, hello, good afternoon and thanks so much for joining us on the program so a development since the show started at four o'clock someone was arrested presumably suspected of harboring azidi because people were astounded that he hadn't been seen anywhere with this very very notable you know affliction and injury to his face yeah it was quite clear that um, he's had some sort of assistance because remember, London is the CCTV capital of the world, yeah. and it, it, we can always do tracking of various um, ways, whether it's mobile phone or other people associate with him tracking their phones as well. So he's definitely been um, assisted in some way. To, to what extent now, well, we still don't know, but he's obviously uh, gone to ground, um, but... The good thing uh, about it is officers have to go into old-fashioned policing, really getting into communities that are associated with him and this other person who's been uh, seen to be connected with uh, uh, the suspect. And then, of course, um, really start to um, drill into what other associates he may have, um, any other addresses that could be uh, looked at, and, you know, really building bridges with the communities that are associated uh, with this individual so that um, it generates moment, momentum of information that uh, hopefully will identify him and get him arrested and brought to court. Um, Leroy, what would you say are the sorts of things that neighbours or people in the community or, I'm not kidding, delivery drivers, postmen, whoever, ought to look out for? Because we know that this guy has pretty much a melted face. I mean, it's a pretty horrible, disfiguring injury, isn't it? Do you think, for example, one of the things to look out for is, you know, medical supplies being taken into a house or, 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 or you know, bandages or, I don't know, that kind of a thing that people in the house will have to start behaving marginally differently because they've got this person with this injury in their house? Yeah, well, that's that's assuming that they can't um, ha have these things available at a time to assist him. But yeah, the, the, any some any form of behaviour that's about out the ordinary that anyone can, so even a neighbour or a, uh, as you say, delivery driver or a postman or woman, whatever it may be, um, don't think that information is useless. Get in touch with the authorities. You know, one hundred and one or um, the Crime Stoppers number 0800. And continue to, to don't doubt, oh, it, it's something that officers won't look at. They will look at this, because this is a national case. This has got the public attention, the length and breadth of the country, because of the, the horrendous nature of it and involving children. And when you see the footage of the car going towards uh, the woman and child uh, in the streets of London, it, it, it beggars belief that someone could act in this way and and still not being caught. So don't um, underestimate the information you might have. Share it with the authorities, the police, and, and, and of course, don't um, think he's, uh, it couldn't be in your area. Um, we have to be all very vigilant. Um, we know the last sighting, but we need to understand that he could be anywhere and he's being assisted. Obviously, the information that we have about this man is limited, but we know various things, don't we? We know that he's a convicted sex offender. We know that he applied for asylum twice and was refused. And in the next uh, section of my programme after the break, we're going to be talking about the fact that the reason that he was allowed to stay and had his uh, plea for asylum accepted the third time was because a, plea, uh, a priest 
testified that he'd undergone a dramatic conversion to Christianity and therefore was repenting for his crimes and repenting for whatever sins he committed and was therefore a great asset to this country and we should keep him here. And, um, and whoever it was that, that was being told this bought it. Well, that's right. I, I mean, you've got, you've got to be very, very um, objective in, in these things. Uh, and I, I understand that people can find faith, whether it's Christianity or Islam or Judaism, whatever it may be. But we still need to be doing a, a very thorough risk assessment uh, around those individuals to ensure that they um, don't um, cause any sort of risk to the, to other people, the wider public, etc. So um, I'm, I'm not I'm not trying to undermine the fact that he became a Christian, but you have to really ask why so much emphasis was placed on that. I mean, I'm a Christian myself, so I, I'm not going to any any way judge uh, an individual, but that there needs to be very very clear information to suggest that this person is fit to be uh, given. Um, immigration status to stay here and of course not to be a risk to to people so i know that 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 that, that vicar um will be feeling well have i contributed to uh this sort of a, event in some way by him being given status to stay and he goes on and carries on a horrendous act that we've all hearing about and we want to see him brought um, to justice Absolutely. as soon as possible. Thank you. Here, here. Thank you, Leroy.